Hello and welcome to SDN Tech Forum. In this video, I'm going. This is the second video of DNAC and StealthWatch integration. And as promised, I'm going to show you the StealthWatch side of it uh, because in previous video we have made the DNAC uh, configuration. So let me show you where it is. Uh, so basically, you have to go to provision services under services you have StealthWatch security analysis and uh, you can see it is checking the registry process and i have two devices where it is already enabled so we are going to focus on this device because here i have a couple of hosts connected and we are going to see those hosts so you can see that stealth watch is enabled and if you want to see the integration again you can go to system setting settings and come back to stealth watch stealth watch integration so this is my smc ip address once you uh, configure your smc put the password so it it make a api calls so you can see that by registering stealth watch with cisco dns center you will be able to add trust certificate to cisco dns center trust pool and enhance the user experience by allowing dns center to make read only api calls to a stealth watch smc so uh, so it knows that what are your flow collector and all those information it knows once you make the integration and if you happen to enable uh, on your devices if you enable stealth watch security analysis on your devices what it does it enable network as a sensor and eta so let's see what configuration actually it pushes okay so stealth watch and dnac uh, so this is the log from device itself so once you enable SSA, it is going to push a flow record, flow exporter and flow monitor. Uh, so you can see the flow record is very basic. It is matching on IPv4 protocol, source address, destination address, transport source port, destination port. So five, five tuple actually, uh, which is bare minimum. You minimum need five tuple for uh, v, uh, V9. Uh, but uh, I would say this is not uh, really great. Uh, at least I would like to see IPv match IPv4 TOS uh, bec because the top application you want to uh, most frequently run report in stealth watches. You want to know what is your top application by uh, DSCP. Uh, but if you don't match it with uh, uh, with that attribute, you are not going to run that. You, you won't be able to run that uh, report. Now let's see what is in exporter. So flow exporter uh, destination, this is the flow collector destination. So it actually does, does know what is your flow collector and uh, flow collector still watch flow collector listen by default listen at the port UDP port 3055. So intelligently it apply that configuration. What it doesn't push is source loop back uh, so source interface. Uh, which is a best practice. I always use source loopback zero. Uh, otherwise, sometime I have hard time visualizing it on a flow collector. So I I uh, I believe this is the config they should also push. But right today they don't push the, this config, and also they enable a flow monitor uh, ETM on. Then you have finally flow monitor, which is calling your exporter and calling the record and then it applies it to all the interfaces uh, on your switch so it basically uh, uh, applies the flow monitor inbound and outbound and also enable et analytics uh, on all your interface this is one of the sample interface so <clears throat> how you are going to verify uh, i have certain uh, udp traffic going on uh, that switch so we are going to see the uh, flow monitor cache on switch and see if we can see that flow and then as a next action we are going to go to smc itself uh, flow collector itself and see uh, that flow uh, logs i would like to you uh, uh, to show you the logs this is the provisioning log when you enable uh, ssa the dnac pushes this config so this is the same config it it creating a record matching uh, uh, matching the attribute five tuple attributes and then Time some timestamp and then you can see uh, it actually create the flow exporter position uh, all the port config and other things and then uh, it apply it create the flow monitor call the flow exporter and record and then start applying it to the interface. So the first interface is 
uh, this is a sample uh, so you can see that it applied on gigi 103 and after that it jumped back jumped to gigi 105 so i it, it make me think like why it jump 104 what was there in 104 that it, it didn't allow it to apply the flow monitor config so I, I looked at my interface and I realized that that was a trunk link going to uh, a UCS where all my VMs are hosted so it looks like today if uh, SSA realized that this is a trunk link it doesn't doesn't uh, push SSA and ET and analytics config on those ports uh, because probably you don't want to uh, enable um, flow monitor on a trunk interface I don't see a reason why but uh, looks like today's behavior is that okay so this is about uh, uh, config and I already have a flow uh, initiated uh, so let's verify on switch itself if we can see the flow and then we will go to um, the flow collector Let me bring let me bring this guy here. Okay, this is my SMC and I have already so you can see that flow collector is here, sixty dot fifty. Um and uh, if I do a flow flow table and filter that table so I'm I already initiated that to save some time you can see this is showing a flow table and I am filtering it with a particular IP address 192.168.61.93 and uh, this is my client it is sending a UDP stream to 60.51 and the UDP flow is uh, using uh, port uh, 33333 so this is the flow finally i'm going to show you uh, on switch itself uh, what the flow what we are seeing on flow collector so i'm using show flow monitor and the monitor which is pushed by dnac and we are want to see the cache in a format a table format and i have, have included my host which is initiating the flow on interface 104 gigi 104 where we applied the flow monitor manually because today dnac doesn't apply a flow monitor config on a trunk interface so i apply the same monitor and a flow is generated using a traffic generator ostinato which i have shown you in earlier video now let's see if we have the flow you can see that uh, 162 one, uh, 192.168.61.93 sending a flow to destination 192.168.60.51 source port is for uh, five fours destination port is five threes and vice versa uh, so and you already have seen on flow collector this flow so i hope you like the video and uh, Today, as I mentioned, this is a bare minimum integration, but uh, it is going to improve only in future. Thank you.